Hello guys, I'm back with a new video for you. Today's topic is uh, about SQL injection. Some of you might know what it is, but some of you might not. So, to define SQL injection, I would say it is a web application vulnerability which allows you to change the logic of an SQL query executed uh, on the server by altering the input you provide. Um, to it. This is done to obtain unauthorized access to restricted info. Uh, I have written an article about this. Uh, the link is in the description. You can check it for uh, more information about, uh, about it. Today I want to focus more on the demo. So let's get to action. I have two examples I want to show you today. The first one is this login portal. This is a simple page, username, password, field, field uh, to, to log in. On the, on the database server, I have created three users. Um, let's go to, to my Ubuntu server and uh, see them. Okay, we have this one here. So let's first use... Okay, and let's select the info from uh, users table. Users. Okay, three users here, user one, user two, user three, password the password for each of them, no need for secure password for this um, example. Um, now let's get back to, to the login portal on my attacker machine and let's see how we can use SQL um, injection. Okay, we saw those uh, users. Let's try the first to use user1 and uh, bad password, uh, incorrect password. Uh, let's say random pass. Log in. Okay, username or password is incorrect. Going back, I'm going to use user one again and put password. Logged in. Okay, we managed to, to log in. It says here, welcome user one. I also added the statement executed behind, so it's uh, easier for um, you to, to understand. So we have here user one for username, the user we typed in that field, and the password password. Now, in order to break this statement and um, modify the input in order to alter the, to change the logic executed behind, we must um, see first where where is uh, where we can um, modify the input. So we see we have here the select all from where username equals. This one cannot be changed. We can change only this one here and this one here. So our uh, our changes will be for, on this part. Now um, we are going to change first for uh, for the password and use the payload uh, in order to log in with the user that actually doesn't exist. So I'm going to log out. I'm going to put the user hacker. And then for password, I'm going to put random. I hope I'm not giving to write uh, incorrect payload. Let's see if I get it. Uh, okay, I got it. So it says welcome hacker. Hacker user doesn't exist. You saw it was uh, only user one, user two, and user three. But somehow I managed to log in. Now let's have a look on the executed statement. Select all from users where username equals hacker and password is random or one equals one. Let's analyze this statement and understand why we managed to, to log in. First of all, we have this password here, the one that I highlighted, because this is the point where I uh, actually modify the input. So we put a random password, we put a user that doesn't exist. Normally we shouldn't have any any line returned um, from the database because this user doesn't exist. But we have this or one equals one here. Uh, one, equals, one equals one is always true. And when we have a condition here, this one, it doesn't matter if it is false or true because 
false or true in the logic operations is always true. So this statement will always be true and uh, the whole select statement will return the whole list of uh, users and, um, and passwords. So uh, if there isn't any other filter that verifies the count, the, the row count for, um, for this select statement, for instance, to check that is uh, it returns uh, an only only one row that uh, would match for a specific user this uh, this happens and everything here and uh, after the two dashes is treated uh, as a as a comment so this part is actually ignored by the server only this only this part is um, is executed let's log out and try again this time for the user so we have user hacker. So we are going to close the uh, single code and then use again this or one, one equals one uh, statement and then use a double dash and a single quote to, um, let's say, ignore, comment the rest, of, um, the rest of the statement in order to be ignored. And for password, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put again random, but you can type anything. It won't matter. If we go back to login, you see now it says welcome hacker. We have this whole payload here um, set as user. And the executed statement changed to select all from users where username equals hacker or one equal or one equals one. And this whole part is ignored. So the executed statement on the server is actually this one. So we have username equals hacker. This is false. We don't have a hacker username in the user's um, table. But one equals one is always true. So we have here false. We have here true. False or true is always true. So this uh, statement will be uh, interpreted as uh, true because it returns uh, the lines. Also, it depends on the logic behind, on filters, uh, so on. But this is the most basic uh, vulnerable example for um, for, SQL, for SQL injection. So we were we managed to um, to log in. Of course, there's a lot of guessing game and trial and error in uh, in SQL injection because normally you don't know the syntax uh, that is used behind. You can guess it, or I don't know think about it and try to try to change based on what you think is executed behind the server. I will change a bit on the on the server side the syntax uh, in order to let you see how this affects the payload. So I'm going to log out and going back to uh, the Ubuntu server. Okay, we have this page here, validate login.php, and here it is the here is the statement um, that is executed behind the um, behind the web interface to say so we have select all from users where username equals username and password equals password variable the one that uh, we already saw on uh, on the page if we change here and put where username equals the variable that holds the username between um, brackets and for the password uh, we do the same thing and uh, we save now we are going back to my attacker machine and try again the same payload used it shouldn't work anymore and we will see how we can change it in order to make it work based on the new the new statement uh, from this uh, validate login php page okay back to the original page so let's try again we had hacker and this single quote one or, or one uh, equals one and then the double dash and the single quote in here random password well you see that it didn't work anymore it doesn't say username or password is incorrect because it uh, it doesn't get somehow to that um, to that part but let's go back now we saw that we added those uh, brackets we need to correct the syntax say so in order to be able to uh, use this payload to log in. So we added uh, another uh, an extra bracket that we will have to close here in, in, in our payload and then use the same or one equals one that is always true. So I'm going to put now again random and login. 
and voila now we are logged in again hacker and uh, this whole payload set us uh, set us user and now the statement executed is this one you see select all from users where username equals hacker and here we close the the bracket in order to don't have uh, to not have a syntax error like after or one equals one always true and this whole part ignored because it is uh, seen as a comment you're logged in again with this new new payload again as i said it's a lot of guessing and uh, experience to say so and trial and error uh, when it comes to sql injection uh, you see how a small change um, can modify uh, the payload needed in order to to log in but the sql statement is still vulnerable okay this was uh, the the first example we're going to check uh, the second one the second example is related to some products page now we have here a logging portal as, um, as in the previous example but um, we're not going to attack this one um, this one here but i want to go back to the ubuntu server and show you the users uh, i have there so let's see okay back here this time i'm going to use the other database for this um, example and if i run again the same statement we see we have here four users admin bronze silver and gold again password password for all of them doesn't matter the ones that are important here are bronze silver and gold now let's go back um, to the attacker machine and try to log in with uh, any of those uh, three and then see exactly uh, where we are going to apply the sql injection okay back to the attacker machine so and we're going to use user silver and password password okay we're logged in we have this access level server and if we click on get products we are um, redirected to a page where we have a list of products available for um, silver access see here, here silver car silver watch this is just um, i don't know basic text just for um, for examples we also have here the uh, sql query executed uh, behind the behind this interface executed on the server we see we have here three columns product name product description and product category and we have here the where clause for product category equals uh, silver this time uh, the sql injection will be applied in the uh, in the url you see here this parameter product category equals silver um, it matches this column here uh, you see also the where clause where product category equals silver i made it like this uh, i made it uh, with the same name in order to be easier to understand normally in real life you might find something different here and again as i said a lot of guessing game and trial and um, and error the first um, example i'm going to show you here in um, this uh, url uh, uh, injection to say so uh, will be to modify the URL in order to obtain also uh, some other products so we have here this uh, SQL statement and instead of silver we are going to put this one silver and this single quote and we are going to put again product category different silver and again this time we're going to add those two uh, single quotes and this single quote in order to avoid syntax error if we hit enter we see now here that we got uh, some other products bronze car silver car gold car bronze watch silver watch gold watch and normally if we check the product category we see that we also have the ones for bronze this one here this one here uh, and this one for gold and this one for gold normally you should see only this one and this one but with silver access you were able to check the list of other products if you go back to the ubuntu server and check the products table we are going to see that these uh, are um, present there so let's check okay if we select here products we see that we have here those six uh, those six items we were able to retrieve also in um, in the example now let's get back to the attacker machine 
Okay, uh, we obtained these results by, uh, let's say, guessing the, the column name that is uh, filtered, product category. But you can also change here. And instead of this, you can put 1 equals 1, like we did before. And if we hit now, you see, we still have them. This is because the select statement it's, uh, is modified because we altered and added this part and we see that this one is actually the executed part. So again, product uh, silvery or one equals one. Even though we have this one here too, uh, we, there are also other rows that are not, uh, that are not retrieved. So this one is going to be uh, true and this will retrieve all the um, uh, all the items uh, here. If we go back and check the the other statement, we see that we altered uh, here and added this part, and then this one here uh, is ignored, and we have product category equals silver, or product category is different um, from silver. Uh, basically, it will return all all the list of um, of products. Okay, and let's try again now, this time with gold, because um, there are also other things that we can do. We can go even further uh, in our SQL injection, but for this, you might need to have uh, some uh, basic knowledge. Okay, um, one, uh, one other thing that can be done is uh, to uh, abuse the union uh, statement in order to obtain information from uh, from other tables. Now we see here that there are three three columns: product name, product description, and product category. One thing that we must keep in mind uh, and take into consideration when we are going to use these union statements is that we must uh, uh, have in other uh, in the other select statement the same number of columns retrieved as we have here. For us, it's easy because we see there are three columns, but uh, normally it's again trial and error. You start first to see if, uh, if the basic statement has one column and you, in the second one, you use one, um, one column. If it uh, shows an error, you, we try with two and so on until we don't uh, receive an error anymore. Uh, at that point, we know that uh, the number of columns we have is um, is correct. So, uh, first of all, let's check that uh, our um, union can be abused. So, I'm going to do this union and select text one, text two, text three, and we're going to put this one here. Now, we altered the, the URL and we see that we got the gold car, gold watch, the results returned from the first statement, uh, from the first select uh, statement, like this one. And the last line with text one, text two, text three is, um, the result for this uh, select statement. And the results are uh, combined because that's what Union does in SQL. It combines the result uh, of multiple uh, select statements. Now, text one, text two, text three doesn't really help us uh, too much because we don't actually have uh, anything to, to do with this. It's not a uh, useful information. Um, uh, for us, but as I said, we might need some knowledge about this. Let's uh, try to get the list of uh, databases uh, present on um, on this um, server. Now, the list of databases is held in a table uh, in a table called schemata from information uh, schema um, schema. So we are going to modify this one here. So we're going to put schema name. We are going to leave text two, text three, because even though we need only one column, we must put three in order to uh, work the, uh, to function the, the union statement to be, to be okay and not throw uh, an error. 
and we are going to put here from information schema dot schemata and okay now you see here the whole list of um, databases present on my um, on my server um, we have here my scale information schema and so on and this one too these two here are the examples i uh, i made in our case it's it is a bit easier because we have a table and it can um, put um, uh, several rows one um, under the other but depending on the website you have uh, there uh, it might not always be the case for a table you might have i don't know a list of um, block items or stuff like this with some text in them some attributes for red no book we have author title and so on and you might not see it i honestly recommend to use the group concat function you'll see immediately what it does Concat, and hit again okay and now it concatenated the uh, results from that column in a single call it 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 really might help you uh, when you are performing a masculine injection and we have um, this one here good uh, now we're going to uh, we're going further and uh, try to find the list of tables from let's say this SQLi DB X, X2 uh, uh, schema. So we are going to put uh, instead of schema name. Now we are going to query a different uh, different table, uh, and we're going to put here table name again. I'm not guessing this. This is the part where I said you need some knowledge um, on, uh, on SQL. And instead of schemata, I'm going to put tables and add the where clause uh, table schema, schema equals, and then okay, I have a space here, SQL I DB example two. Okay, now we have this last line here, uh, products and uh, users, and you see again, this is the first state, select statement that will retrieve these two lines, and the other one that we shouldn't be able to execute is this one here, and it returns uh, the um, list of tables present on, on this schema. We have products, we have users, and we can go even further and instead of information schema the tables we are going to check this time the columns we're having we, we need to change here table name uh, to column name from information schema columns and in the where clause we are going to add another um, step and say table name equals users Okay, now we got the structure for the table users. Again, see here, this is the second statement that is executed where that where we shouldn't uh, be able to retrieve data from because we're not supposed to have access uh, to, um, to this part. Now we see here that we have three columns, user ID, username and password. There are three columns to match uh, the three columns we have in the normal display for the, for the products. In a real situation, you might have four or five. It depends. It depends. Uh, and you can select only three of them. But you can run multiple statements and merge the data after based on the primary key of, the, of that table. So we're going to do this time something different. We are going to select, instead of these three items here, we're going to select user ID, username, password. And now we are not going to use information schema.columns because we want to use SQLI DB example two dot users. And we don't even have to add these where clauses because we want to get all the users. And now we hit enter and we see here, we have the products, gold card, gold watch, this one here. And then 
with this select statement, we're actually able to retrieve the list of username and passwords from the database. This is just an example. Normally, the users and the password, the password of the users is not stored as a hash, and um, this whole stuff worked because the um, user that I used behind is a, is a user which has access to everything on the database. But you got the point. You you can abuse this union um, in SQL injection and get access to to info that you that you shouldn't. This was my uh, my second example. Guys, this was my demo. You were able to see how you can use SQL injection to exploit web vulnerable application. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something from it. And if you got so far in the video, I want to thank you for your uh, the, for for the time it took to to watch my video. If you enjoy the content I do, hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you like and, uh, and what you didn't. See you next time. Bye-bye.